Hey there guys, join me on exploring Webflow and converting this landing page that we previously designed into a static Webflow page. This is not a tutorial, believe me. This is just me exploring Webflow. This is my first time in using the application and I'm having a bit fun out of it. So I'm gonna play a quick uh, video montage of what I did. First on uh, starting to export the files from Adobe XD then then creating the static web webflow page and lastly the explanation on what i did there so enjoy and i'll be back in a few minutes so a little disclaimer i know a bit of html and css so it is much easier for me to convert this page to a webflow page even though this is a first time designing on webflow I would just recommend learning some basic HTML and CSS. It would help you a long way, in my opinion. So here you can see the sliced UI elements I've just uh, drafted. I don't know if slice is still relevant, <laughs> but I often did this before, before designing web, web pages and converting them to hard code long ago, just to have a point of reference on where should I put my elements.
So we have the these other elements. I just I'll just give a, a brief summary of it. The nav bar here, then a div block which is here. This is the background actually, and then the container. So there are just three major elements. But on those major elements, there are a bunch of little elements that made this web design. So this is the grid. Then we have links here. Three links. One, two, three. And this link is actually a drop down. So it's different. So as you can see here in the preview, if you click it, you'll have this thing. There we go. That's a drop down. Right? Then and we will see this link block. This link block actually has only an image. Okay? So this is a search image. And then the next is a link. The last thing in a, on our grid is a button. So that's the elements inside the nav bar, and then a container, then a grid. A one by seven grid, one row by seven column grid. So next would be the div block. This div block is actually just a background. So what we did here is we make it in the absolute position. It's like something that is floating on your website and you can say that I'm gonna put you on the top right, top left, bottom right, bottom left, or you're gonna stick to the right, stick to the left, stick to the top, stick to the bottom, or stick to the whole thing. So we we make this one with a Z index of negative one. Because if you make it the Z index with the zero, Z index, you see, the uh, other elements are are blocked. So what you need to do is you need to place it in a negative one value so that it will move backwards. So you just think of it as the uh, layer. Okay, so if you have higher value on it, if you have a higher value on it on that layer, it will go top. If you get a lower value, it will go behind. So the next is the container grid. So this container is the first is div block. It's a div block here. Then we will have two elements now. This is a grid and then an image, right? So let's just discuss with the first the grid. So this grid has six rows. This grid has six rows, which is composed of a heading, heading tag, an h2 tag, this is an h2 tag, an h1 tag, then a paragraph, then this is a column, column element, and the column element has a button on it, and then the link block. I want to discuss first about the link block. You cannot put an icons on a button, so you have to do a link block. You want to do a link block so you can put an image, then a text, or a background image if you want to. Right? So you would do this, then I just did this. I, I would float the element, float it on the right, place it, align it on the center, and float it to the right. Then I gave it a padding of 15. So that it will maintain this social distancing, so it would look good. The link blocks you can style them. You will style them with this, with strokes or no strokes. There. So we will move to the next one. So this one, this next section is much more interesting actually. This is the a grid within a grid. So we have there this a grid. On the fifth one, on the fifth row, it has a grid also. Then I we didn't stop there. We added another grid inside it. So we have a grid section now. Three layers of grid. So we have here the grid and the grid. So this first grid within the grid is a one by two grid, I think. Right, one by two. One row by two columns. There we go. And then inside it is a, the first section of the grid is the image, this icon image. And then the next is another grid. So this grid within a grid within a grid has another 
element has two more elements, which is a rich text box. A rich text box is a collection of uh, text elements. An H1, a paragraph, a uh, block text, just not links. You cannot put links on a rich text block. So what we did is if you wa I want to put a link, I will put another link block so or a link text. So I just put another link block here because it has an icon on it. The next icon. There. So what the what does the grid look like? It looks like this. There you go. Just a two by one grid. So that's very interesting because this is a grid, then another grid here, then another grid here. So here's this the placeholder for the last one for the switching, switch buttons. And then the last one is the image. So what I did for the image is we have here this grid, then the image. Then I would float the grid to the right. So this is so this uh the image to the right, not the grid. I've edited this thing. So if it is it has a margin of zero all over it. It looks like this. So what I want to do is move it here on the side. So how would I do that? I would adjust the margin here and put a negative value on it. So if it is positive value, it will go there. But I want to put a negative value. What does? As we go here. So would you? So you would ask me why did it go on the bottom side? So because this is a float thing. So it would not go to the right side of this. So what it does, it goes to the bottom. This thing, it won't, uh, what you call this, it will bump to this thing and it would move there. It will continue moving there. So if this 500, it will continue moving there. So this is like, what you call, this is like a, a, big, a big wall. Big wall. So if you, so if you move this, going there, it won't bump into the wall, but would avoid it. So that's it, I think. So that's it. I hope you enjoy this new overview of Webflow. I've started, I've started exploring this just for fun. And I hope you like it. I like Webflow very much, actually. So I could like uh, do the animation stuff. So about the animations, it's just a basic, uh, what you call it? basic animation. So, so what would you do is you just click this element. So you have the animation here. Just add a page trigger. And I think I'm gonna add a page load. Then I would select an action, start an animation. Then just add a new action here and move like that. So what would you do is right click and change target. If I want to change target. The, the button. I think I'm gonna go with the button and move it to some location. This, there, and then add the last position of it. Change target. The button. Where's the button? There we go. Oh no! No 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 no! This one. So what's what's good in Webflow is you can select here or select here on the navigator. So let's just test the animation. <laughs> As you can see there, it moved. So keep in mind that if you want to load, if you want the animation to load in at the same time, you need to separate them. So you have a separate page load trigger for this elements, separate page load trigger for these elements as you can see on the video i've i've compiled them in one page load element and it didn't look good i think i can i can separate them but it is on a timeline so it's hard to control or manipulate so i find out that this one is much easier you would have two page load triggers well i hope you learned something <laughs> from from a newbie like me thank you thank you thank you for listening and have a good one